welcome, Patty. I'm so excited about this conversation. <laughs> I've been thinking about it now for the last month since we started. I bet. <laughs> I bet. Exciting! We're gonna do a reading. I know we're gonna do a reading <laughs> and talk more about the Akashic Records. I I honestly feel I should talk closer to the mic. Um, I honestly feel like I manifested this conversation because I've been looking to find someone to come on the show to talk about Akashic Records because I really believe in reincarnation and how our past lives inform our current life. And I've just been looking for an expert to come on the show and, and talk about all of those things. And, you know, getting a reading also is a plus. So yeah, I'm just geeking out right now because I'm just so excited. <laughs> I can't wait to get into it. <laughs> well, everything is intention and, yeah. and you put that intention out there and it, it, you do you do get sometimes yes. it's not always packaged as perfectly as what how that maybe sounds but but yes everything's yes. intention and I think timing and alignment too because I've put it Absolutely. out there for like a year and completely okay. forgot about it so now it's finally here <laughs> yeah well and you know that's another secret to manifesting I'll tell you I'm going to just kind of jump in there is you, you kind of said it you you set the intention and then you let it go yeah. and it, you know because it, what you ask for you can receive but it needs to come in in a way that serves you that's aligned to you and again it might not look exactly like what you thought it was going to but you need to be open to whatever comes and how it comes that's part of the magic of manifesting in my opinion you're absolutely right and yeah. you know there's so many like rules of thought out there like do this and do that if you're trying to manifest and when this is coming up that means you're close to your manifestation. And I'm sure that that stuff works. But for sure. me personally, it just puts me too much in my head. Yep. And I realize that when I want something, think about it and just kind of let it go. And yep. I'm okay with whether or not it happens, or I just kind of know it's going to happen. And I'm not worried about the timing, then it happens. And I'm like, Oh, I forgot about this, but good for yeah, you. It's here. <laughs> good. That's awesome. Love it. Yeah. So anyways, I just want to jump right in. Yes. Um, and start talking about the Akashic Records. But before we get into that, obviously, in our previous, um, in the previous recording that we did, we briefly touched on it. But just as a refresher, yep. could you just let us know how you got into this work for Akashic Records and also what the Akashic Records are? Absolutely. So, so I got into this work, I kind of fell into it. Uh, as we talked about the first time around, I didn't choose it. I set the intention, right? Uh, put me on my highest path um, for, uh, in, in particular, I want financial freedom and, and how can I best use that? And then I was kind of directed in life after this uh, trauma I had with breast cancer. It's like I needed to pivot and um, so I first started uh, um, in in spa work. I, I opened a spa and then I was immediately redirected to energy work, which I didn't even know was a thing. Um, and I followed that and I'm like, what is this energy healing thing? And then it turned out to be Reiki. So I started in Reiki and then I'm like, well, I don't know if, how I feel about this, but let's go with it. You know, it's like, following the crumbs right so yeah. I definitely did that and that opened up to the the door for work in past lives uh, I started tapping into that a few years after I started doing the Reiki and then I was just really fascinated by that and I you know did a bunch of research I'm like what is this and uh the term Akashic Records kept coming up and I'm like what is that and it just was like I know that's what I need to be doing and it's what I've been doing for the past uh, seven of the or eight now, probably of the 13 years I've been a, a healer. Um, it just found me and I was ready to uh, follow and, and wonder and scratch my head a little bit along the way. So uh, that's how I fell into it. And what are the Akashic Records, right? The, the Akashic Records are like an energetic database. It, it holds all the information about everything you would ever want to know about the universe. It gets recorded in this fifth dimensional database. And every soul has its own Akashic record. And in that Akashic record, which can be accessed intuitively, we all can access our own Akashic information. It's always coming to us in some form or another. We're just not paying attention to the fact that, oh, this could be a clue or a hint, or this is telling me where I should go, right? We And once we learn to you know, harness our intuition and listen and, and ask those questions, we receive it from our Akashic records. So um, it, it holds the information about your soul, 
uh, your gifts, your attributes, your strengths, um, all the things that your soul was blessed with for you to use, should you choose, because you come in with free will, right? Um, while you're in your physical incarnation. Um, so it's really great information to have about, well, who am I and what are my gifts? And there are many, many ways you could use your gifts. There's not just uh, one and you're done and you missed it <laughs> type of thing. Um, there are many ways to create our abundance. And it also holds your chosen life experiences mm -hmm. for this lifetime, uh, which will serve as drivers. And they're usually based on karma. And karma uh, is the energy of a choice you made in a past life that didn't serve you, that didn't align to you in some way. Um, and it's considered negative in nature. So it's not judgmental. It just didn't serve you. And, and it's highly individual, right, for every, everybody. Uh, what's negative for you could not even be considered negative for me because I'm just a different energy, a different person, I'm on a different path. Mm -hmm. So it's like, then laws of karma kick in. And it says, well, for every negative choice that you make, it must be balanced out by a positive, more empowered choice. And if you don't balance out a certain energy in the lifetime in which you created it, it will persist or repeat for lifetimes and lifetimes until you decide to make another choice. Um, and so that ends up being all of our repeating patterns, things that we, most of us actually are blind to our karma because we just do it. We might be conditioned into it. It's just how our family does things. It's, you know, and so you're going to incarnate into the perfect family, into the perfect time and place on earth for you to pick up where you left off. Um, and so it's great information to have. You can, you can access this information um, and say, why is this? What is the pattern for sometimes we don't even know? Like, what am I doing that's working against me? And then it's like, where did this start and why? And the interesting thing is that it's almost always understandable why you chose it initially. Uh, you might have been forced into it. You might have had no choice, but it worked for then but you never changed it. So you're still doing it and it's now working against you and it needs to be cleared. Um, so it's great insight into why uh, and how you can take new action to put yourself on an entirely new trajectory in your life um, through new empowered action. So that's the what the Akashic records are and that's the benefit of learning to work with your own Akashic records. Yeah, it's very fascinating because ever since I learned about the Akashic Records, I found it very empowering because intuitively, ever since I was young, I've always kind of felt like this isn't it, right? And I couldn't explain exactly what I meant by that. Like sometimes mm -hmm. I would I would come out of my um, house, sit on the porch and just like look up at the sky and just know that all of what I'm seeing around me, the people I'm seeing around me and how the whole world is working just doesn't, it feels like there's so much more that we need to know. Yeah. So, you know, doing more research and growing up and, and coming across different teachings and ideas. And, and the first time I heard about reincarnation, I was like, intuitively, I'm like, that sounds right. That sounds yeah. about right. Makes sense. And it makes a lot of sense. And then I heard about the Akashic Records. I'm like, well, that makes sense to me because if we reincarnate and we have different lives, like, you know, our, our soul has some sort of history, right? And it's also empowering in so many different ways because it allows you to not take people's actions towards you so seriously. It allows you not to be too hard on yourself. And it also, at least for me, speaking for myself, allows me to feel more empowered to make different changes and get insight on hmm is there some sort of karmic debt here like have I had a couple of lives where I struggled with forgiveness and now I'm, I find myself in this lifetime again having to confront people that I have to forgive and I'm still you know struggling to forgive them so then tapping into the Akashic records or you know our, our intuition realizing like oh this is a lesson I'm supposed to be learning so then I make the action to actually learn the lesson and, and, and make new and inspire change. So I love everything about the Akashic Records. And I just wanted to ask, is there, when you tap into the records, are you in a specific time? 
or are you interacting with other beings? Because people talk about having a spirit team and angels and spirit guides. Are you just kind of like, you know, if you were going into my records, for example, would you just be like, oh, it, it'll, it'll have like Jumi on like what looks like a book and you just kind of open it and start reading it? Or are you getting fed the information? Well, the way I do it is I work with your spirit guide teams. Um, and I ask the questions um, and I receive the answers. And so, you know, the thing about the Akashic Records is that, like I said, it contains all the information about all your life. So it's just chock up full of information. So if you don't have specific questions, um, you're going to get all kinds of information. And it'll be like, well, it doesn't really make any sense, or I don't even know how to apply what I'm receiving. And I, I always say it's kind of like going to Costco without a shopping list, right? You're just yeah. like <laughs> looking around and it's like, wow, this is interesting, but come out with nothing, right? Or, or you know, $300 worth of stuff, you don't know what to do with. So um, you, you want to be very intentional with how you work. And, and I, I created an online course on how to do this to teach you how to do it because it is a lot of information you want to direct it and so um like for today when i'm going to work with you it's the first reading so the guides decide your guides decide what information they're going to allow through first because you're like this an onion right you have all these layers to you and it's like well we got to start here because this is affecting everything, including the one thing right here. So it's like, yeah. we got to start big and, and work down. And um, so hopefully that answers your question. That's that's where I'm getting the information. And, um, you know, sometimes I have to stop and listen. Sometimes I have to ask a little different question inside my head and see. And, and then it's all up to my interpretation mm -hmm. of what I receive. So it's good to kind of have this banter back and forth. Where it's like, this is what I'm receiving. Does this make sense? And how do you apply it? Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And I, another quick question too yeah. is I know that there are different type of like psychic abilities, like clear audience and um, I'm forgetting the other clears, but like some where you hear something, others where you see something an image yep. in your head. So like, how does, when you're getting the information, is it usually like you hear something in your head? Are you seeing images? Both. Both. Nice. Both. It's kind of hard to explain. Uh, <laughs> it's like I, I kind of tend to be all four uh, of the clairs at, at different times. Um, what usually happens is when I set an intention is they'll play like a little movie in my head is mm -hmm. the best way to describe it. And it's brief. Um, it just gives me a, a I can get an idea of right away of and, and I'll even kind of ask intuitive is this is this right and, and I'll be like yes yes um, or sometimes I just need to discuss it with you because I'm not getting more um, and then um, sometimes I get I hear a word um, it, yeah and sometimes once in a while I feel things um, like I'll get a feeling in the pit of my stomach or in my side or mm. up in here. It depends on which chakra is being affected. That can happen too, but it's usually visual and, and very quick. Nice. Yeah. That, that's awesome. Um, I'm excited to, to jump into the reading <laughs> if you are um, yeah. and, and kind of see how you, you work with these records. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, before we came on to the uh, Zoom call, I called in your spirit guides and um, asked for some insights. So we're going to be doing a, a reading for Jumi. So what you got for me? <laughs> <laughs> so it being your first reading, um, and this is kind of how a reading would go for, you know, for anybody, um, is I'm first going to share with you, you know, who you are at soul level. Um, right. It's really important for you to know that because First of all, you want to give yourself permission to just be who you are. Um, we are who we are. We don't change a whole lot. Um, and to know the gifts and the upsides as well as the potential downsides of those gifts, because that will share with you how you're designed to look at your life experiences. You know, you're going to yeah. look at them with through a certain lens of your soul gifts, and you want to know that. Um, and then we're going to go um, uh, into your life lessons. I'm going to weave some of that in there. And then, like I said, I'll go into the karma that your guides feel are affecting you the most right now. I'll conduct some clearing and I clear it as I share it with you. It's kind of uh, simultaneous. And um, and then I will share with you next steps that we could cover should you you know choose to investigate this further. This is what I would work with you on. 
Um, and we go from there. And then when I say clearing, um, it's an energy clearing, right? So I'm clearing your energy fields and clearing your chakras. And you will feel that. Sometimes people mm. even feel it before we start because the intention is set, right? Everything is intention. So sometimes you might feel out of sorts, you know, it's like a detox, right? Yeah. Your, your physical body is going to assimilate that. And then also it usually will bring into your space, sometimes fairly quickly, a situation that's resonant of the karma you need to clear. Mm. And it's doing that to prompt you to take new action okay. because it's one thing to know it, it's another thing to actually do it. Yeah. <laughs> and that can be a big difference. You know, sometimes yeah. people are like, I know what I should do, but if you never get around to doing it, you don't change your life. Yeah. So um, I, that can happen too. So I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah. Okay. Um, does that help? That helps. Kind of yeah. All that. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So, um, and sometimes I'm just looking down to, to here. So if I'm looking down or away, I am paying attention. Okay. <laughs> I'm like splitting, splitting my, my focus here. So I am going to start by telling you who you are at soul level. So uh, your soul uh, really resonates to uh, energies of love and compassion. Um, so what that means is that you are someone who is naturally loving, very giving. Um, you believe in nurturing and give and take and being very supportive of the other people in your life, whether it's romantic, whether it's family, whether it's friends, whether it's business, that's going to be kind of your top priority is I want to maintain a good, loving, nurturing relationship. Um, and for you, it really is about that reciprocity. Um, you really are vested in receiving that from other people as well. And if you don't receive that, um, it could have you uh, thinking that well, maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe I need to try a little harder. Um, and it could have you going down that rabbit hole. Um, and on an extreme example, you know, you could like become a doormat potentially, right? It's just like, I gotta, I can't do enough for this person and they still aren't reciprocating what's wrong, right? So you always wanna watch for, for that potential. Um, and then um, this is also something that's going to help you very much in a one-on-one -on -one situation, um, especially in business. Uh, you're gonna be very good in one-on-ones uh, -on where people can actually see you in this kind of situation is really good or in person because people will want to be in that space somehow of your love energy so they're going to feel your warmth they're going to want to be with you they're going to want to hang out in your space uh, because it's just part of of who you are and as a matter of fact you um you might even be one of these people that has uh, a lot of people just coming up to you in random places like at the bank or the grocery store, right? Does that happen to you? Yes. And they start talking to you and you're like, what the heck? Why this always happens to me, right? It's part of your gift. It's part of how you're designed. It's nothing special you have to invoke. It's people feel that, of course, not on a conscious level. And they're like, I'm just going to go hang out and talk to this gal. And, they, you know, you just have this ability to hold space for people. Um and they can really like see themselves very clearly while they're in your space. So that's a gift you have that you could use in many ways. This is just one of them, right? So it's yeah. aligned to you. And then you've got this compassion side of you, which is a nice dovetail with the, with the love energy that you have. And, and compassion energy really speaks to your belief that you know, we, we are all one at the physical level that when I help you, that helps me and we all need to work together. And, um, you know, you really want to help those who can't help themselves is kind of like what I'm hearing. It's like, you're just kind of really drawn to that situation where it's like, how can I help? And helping large groups of people, in other words. So you've got the individual here, you've got the community building here that you're really good at, regardless of what you're doing, whether it's a family gathering, whether it's a friend gathering, whether it's for business or whatever it is, you're just good at pulling people together for a common cause. And then you get a lot from that energetically. Um, it makes you not only feel good, of course, but, you know, everyone's on the same page, everyone is benefiting, and that's just a really beautiful um, use of, of your gift. Um, but again, you know, 
if you're not receiving um, that positive feedback from that environment, it could make it really hard for you. Again, you might think, well, maybe I need, I better try harder. And then you start giving more of your time and more of your energy. You can become very depleted this way. Do you recognize this potential? 100%. Yourself? <laughs> So it's like, if like oh, I got to give more. And it's like, that's actually the wrong. If you start thinking that way, that's where you need to stop. Like, mm -hmm. wait a minute, you know? Um, and then it could even on an extreme, you know, um, expand out into like, you know, then you're giving your money away and you're giving your possessions away. And then you're just in this utter state of lack mm -hmm. and you don't know why. And it's like, but I'm supposed to be doing these things. And it's like, no, you're supposed to be abundant. And so for, for your kind of energy, this love, compassion, boundaries are so, so important. And boundaries, I mean, everyone needs to benefit from that, but you in particular. And <clears throat> boundaries might be a bit of a foreign concept for you because you're like, but I'm here to be loving and compassionate. And what's loving and compassionate about a boundary? Well, it's highly <laughs> <laughs> highly loving it's self-love one of the things that you're here to work on and we would, would work on in future is self-love um how much is too much because you also bring with you uh some very um, angelic qualities uh of of tolerance unconditionality um being non-judgmental in nature that's another reason a lot of people will just be in your space because you're just that way um it's hard to find here on, on earth and so you are potentially prone uh, to be a target if you will for people who want to take your energy, um, who don't have your best interest in heart, uh, because that's what happens here. There's negativity. Um, so boundaries are really important. Um, so you always want to make sure it's like, is this person on the same page? Is this person taking too much or am I allowing? It's really the question because it's always about you. Am I allowing this person too much of my time, my space, my energy, because I'm getting depleted? And that could also be in family members. So you always want to keep keep that in mind. And then you also have um, an additional line of energy going to your fifth chakra, of course, mm. your communication throat chakra. And I believe that that really started in this particular, this current lifetime. Uh, you, you came in uh, with an intention of using your voice in some way, either through the spoken word or through a written word or, or both to teach or speak or write to create positive impact on other people. Um, and of course, you're doing that with the podcasting. I don't know if this is something that you've always had an interest in um, and it's kind of coming to fruition or but it's always going to serve you in some way to use the spoken or written word um, to uphold your opinions and perspectives. All right. So so we're kind of painting this really beautiful picture of your gifts. And uh, hopefully you can understand, too, that there are many ways you could do that. There's not just one way. Uh, but what's important here is that you do use them because it's going to create your abundance in some way. Okay. Yes. Any questions on any of that that I'm receiving so far? No, it's just like I have goosebumps because <laughs> you are reading me, no pun intended, but <laughs> um, it's really, really almost scarily spot on in terms of like some of the things you talked about okay but like with the boundaries and just my heart is always in a state of most of the time because I I'm still a human being and I live on this plane and you know there's uh anger and hate that might come up sometimes but for the most part sure. my default setting is just to be like really kind and loving and understanding yep. and like I've struggled so many times just feeling like it's so difficult to be myself in this world because I don't want to be taken advantage of yep. but it's also like my nature and I I've come yep. to the point though where I realize like no this is who I am but I also need to um get stronger at self-love and also not overcompensating when people don't um take what I have to offer if they don't receive it from a good place exactly so I 100% agree with you boundaries um are something that I've been working hard over the last couple of years to learn and not just learn but uphold because I still struggle with that sometimes and just not 
giving myself, giving of myself too much, especially when I feel like I might be getting taken advantage of. Exactly. All, all of the above. Yes. Yeah. And, and it's right. It's like, it's not everybody else. It's me. And I need to change how I am to accommodate my gifts um, to be more discerning. That's usually yeah. the thing I say is, is this that discernment? And it's not like you've got to start to judge everybody that comes into your space, but it's like, how is this too much? Am I giving too much? Am I allowing too much? And then, you know, when you do share, everyone's in there at a different point in their own healing journey. They're going to exactly. hear you differently depending on where they're at and if, if at all. And that's okay, right? It's like, I'm just going to release that and allow for the people who should be in my space to come in. Yes, it, we all should do that. Um, and, but you especially with with the gifts you have, you're just, you know, that beautiful, warm individual that we all love to be around, but not everybody is deserving of that space. Yeah, and right. I'm, I'm and I'm realizing that too. And And what you said about the throat chakra, mm-hmm. I feel so much energy here. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot, especially over the last couple of years. I know that for me, a natural gift of mine, has always been public speaking like I can get on stage and talk and not really be that nervous but I'm I'm usually more I usually used to be more nervous on like on a, on a one-to-one but no get in front of a hundred people and talk like I can do that um but over the last couple of years like I just feel this like intense energy mm-hmm. in my throat chakra so much so I was telling one of my friends I was like you know when it comes to doing the podcast I don't want to say I don't have a choice, but it almost feels like when I'm not doing it, there's this like overwhelming, like nagging feeling where it's like, I don't have a choice. Like I actually have to do it. And it's not just from a place of, oh, I need to talk. It just feels like, no, we need you here. Like, I know we talk about intuition and listening to our guides and sometimes it's hard to hear them and hear like the direction of of our guides or God or the Holy Spirit of whatever you want to define it as. But this part of my life is just extremely loud. Yeah. That it's like, no, you have to stay with the podcast. And <laughs> those are, yeah. yeah, that's your inspiration. And that's coming from your Akashic records as this is where you should be. This is uh, maybe not only going to provide some healing on some level, but take you to where you need to go to reach your highest potential. And it's those inspired actions. And, um, and even like physical, like things will present themselves at the physical body, positive or negative. Um, you will feel that it's like, I just need to express myself here or here or here or however. And it, it can feel very negative if we're not getting the message. Uh, if we're just ignoring it and putting it off, it will get louder and louder. Anything, whether it's karma, whether it's, hey, hello, you, you need to go this direction. Kind of like me when I was saying, I just kind of followed the crumbs. It's like, I couldn't stop it. <laughs> yes yeah it wasn't going away right I'm like I guess I just need to be doing this and voila so yeah. you did the same thing right um so yeah that's beautiful that's what what everybody who's listening follow that it's sometimes it's very quick and it's like ah hmm, do I need to follow that or not yes you do <laughs> do it because we have free will our guides and our angels ascended masters whoever you connect with cannot interfere with your free will yeah. but they can sure nudge you along they can sure make it hard for you to ignore right yeah it, it's so funny when you talked about earlier like doing the readings and, and clearing some of this energy um you know everything you're saying I'm resonating with and and I know I've been consciously working on just you know, doing shadow work and just unblocking certain things. And it's funny this morning, I I literally woke up because you said that sometimes you might feel the clearing before the the reading. I woke up with this strong mantra and it was just kind of like, you know, the jargon, like nah, like enough almost, which is, it's, it's synonymous for that. And it was basically like enough. I want more. I deserve more. <laughs> I I'm love getting it. more. And that's, it was, <laughs> it was that energy that like, I felt that mantra it's because usually people repeat a mantra so they can feel it. I felt it and I repeated it. Like I woke up with that energy, like enough. Wow. I that's want awesome. more. I love it. I deserve more. And I'm not taking less like enough. 
I love and it. I was like, oh, wow, where's that energy coming from? I mean, I've been working <laughs> on it for a while, but it was, it was just like so strong. Uh, well, and that's yeah. why I like to warn people that, you know, it could actually start before you and I talk. And I don't like to tell you in advance because I like to, I like to hear, you know, just this yeah. very thing. It's like, it's all intention. Um, you set an intention when, when we agreed, I'm going to come back on, I'm going to clear you on X day. It's like the universe is like, okay, on this day, we're going to start on Jumi first. Yeah. I mean, they don't hold back. Yeah. And it's like, oh, but I, that's right. I said, I wanted to clear this, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> So they're right on time. You just yeah. forgot. Yeah. Um, that's what I love about it. Yeah. Um, and, and that's the other thing too, about the Akashic records in general is that we're always setting intentions. We're just not aware of it. Yeah. And then we forget about it, but the universe hasn't forgotten. So mm -hmm. something might show up in six months or a year from now. And you're like, where did this come from? Mm -hmm. Like, well, somewhere along the line, I set the intention or something like this and that's how you become a conscious creator that's I, you know i have it on my website conscious creation through energy healing because so much of what we do is unconscious and subconscious and just auto repeat because i'm too busy to think about anything new and they're all intentions we're teaching the universe constantly so the more aware you are the more you can start to really see how powerful you are because you're like dang, I just, I manifested that. I yeah. did that. Yeah. And, and so if you can look at your negative stuff as just stuff to get out of your way, and I realize that's easy for, for me to say, but trust me, I have had years of working through my negativity. I know what it's like. It is not easy. You just look at it as like, okay, just bring it on because I want to get on the other side of it and start living my life as, an, as a powerful creator. And then I'm going to start setting intentions for what I want and then take certain specific action. Um, and it's a very different way to live. Yes. Um, instead of being reactionary, we're now leading the way. Yeah. That's what the manifesting is about is I'm in charge and I'm just knocking this stuff out of my way. Um, that's a game changer. Yeah. A hundred percent agree with you there. <laughs> So there you go. So um, that's your reading for today. Yeah. Oh, that was, that was great. Patty, you, you know, just, you know, thanks to my spirit guides and thanks <laughs> to you obviously for giving me such a validating reading and just kind of allowing me to peek into some past life karma and, and, and stuff that I've had to, um, to deal with as well. I, I one, quick question is just uh -huh. that um you know people there's so many different modalities that we can use and so many different tools to learn more about ourselves and um on a spiritual level and learn more about other people in our lives and one of those tools is like psychic mediumship mm -hmm. does that ever do, do does that ever cross into akashic records readings do you find can so i guess my question really you know if I can simplify it is can Akashic records inform psychic mediumship do you see people using yes. that and also is there like a major difference between them or they're yes. kind of okay I think so okay I mean if you ask I'm not a psychic medium if you ask a psychic medium they might disagree so this is just my opinion yeah <clears throat> you know the, the reason I say there's a difference is because with the Akashic records, you know, the basis behind it is, is that we are always creating our reality through our free will choices. And you mm -hmm. can change your choice anytime you want. And that will put you on an entirely new trajectory. Um, and, and I think that's the difference because a psychic medium will probably pick up on just one trajectory. And you might be on that trajectory right now when that person is working with you and say, well, yeah, this is, this might happen. And then this person's going to come in and this person's come in, but say in six months, you make a paradigm shift in your life and you decide to study something else and maybe even go here and do that. You're on a whole other timeline. So then you're going to be like, well, this psychic medium didn't know what the heck they were talking about. <laughs> like, well, mm -hmm. no, you changed trajectories. And they're both right. 
It's just you and your free will, you took yourself on a whole other timeline. And I think that they can they can just pick up on one um, outcome. And so if I were to work with you on manifesting, which is kind of a part B, you know, right mm -hmm. now we're doing. So when I work with people, we we're first clear karma, then we start the manifesting mm -hmm. process. So mm -hmm. the manifesting is, OK, what outcome do you want? Right. Do you want this or this or this or this? Because, you know, you, you need to know because that's the direction I'm going to take you with your choices. And then we get you there. Um, and that's how, again, you see how empowered you really are. It's like, dang, I can. And it's not that these are bad, but you pick what you want. Um, so that's what I think the difference is, is they're picking up on one timeline. I'm sitting here saying you can have any timeline you want. Which one is it? Right. Can mm -hmm. you see into the, can you pick up future past lives? I yes. know time is, okay. I mean, sorry, yeah. not future past lives. That I know what sense. you mean. <laughs> yeah, future lives. Future trajectory, yes. Future trajectories. Yes, um, to a certain extent. Because again, if you go too far into the future, it's just, who knows? Yeah. You know, so I try not to go out more than like a year or maybe maybe a year or and a half or whatever. Because sometimes when we start on a trajectory, like say, okay, I want to find a new romantic partner. Say that's your desired manifestation. And then you and I would talk about, okay, well, a little, let's get a little more specific here. What exactly? I mean, I don't want to, I don't care about the color of his hair and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like, what energy do you want this to be? Do you, are you looking for fulfillment in a relationship? Are you looking for balance? Are you looking for support? You know, you want to pick an energy that you're looking for you want to become that energy and as you become that energy that's how you attract the person that has that quality that you're looking for mm -hmm. um and it depending on your karma and historically how long it takes you to shift your energy we can say okay i can look into your record and say it's probably going to take you about 18 months to do this based mm -hmm. on past your past history. Um, so you want to be patient with that, right? You, you want to know, well, that's about how long it's going to take. So I can't, you know, give up in six months because uh, historically that's not what's involved. And if you do stop and you make another choice, well, then that's a different future. It has a different outcome. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I can look at the actions you're taking and say, well, Jumi, you, you know, you can make that choice, but this is potentially where you might end up mm -hmm. versus oh. here. So it becomes a real, um, it's like a, a treasure map. Yeah. And it's like, well, which road do I want to take? And, you know, again, they might all be good, but which one do you really want? Yeah. What, what's of your, <laughs> I always, I always used to say this when I was younger, I was like, I think, you know, because of free choice, we have multiple destinies, but I always felt like yeah. we had like an ultimate, like this is the mm -hmm. best course of action all these other course of actions are good, but you have like this ultimate one that yes. gets you to your highest potential. So I used to pray this prayer and I should pick it back up. Like, you know, God lead me down the path to my highest, truest destiny and potential. Um, so it's interesting that you're saying that. Well, and I think it's interesting that you're saying that because that's kind of like a, my, my secret sauce is and I'm even working on this for myself. It's like, I want my highest potential. None of this messing around, right? Yeah. It's like I'm in a place in my life. What is my highest potential? And I'm, I'm kind of working behind the scenes on some projects around that because I do agree there is a highest potential. Mm -hmm. And man, if you ask for your highest potential, you better hold on because you're going to have to do some heavy stuff. <laughs> And, you know, it's awesome because you have no idea the potential that you have. And when you say this no holds barred, man, put me on my highest potential. Oh, you're going to have to do some stuff that is going to rock your world. And it's that is more than a year that that takes two to three years, in my opinion, uh, depending on where you're at in your journey to get there and get that ball rolling, because you've got so much to clear first. Yes, it's not bad uh it's all good it's awesome um and uh it it's a journey I'll tell it, you it's a crash course I, I've made yeah. I, I mean I don't know if I'm on the highest timeline or potential at the moment but I well if, if you yeah. ask for it you're getting put on yeah it. <laughs> I just remember there's certain things I've gone through and there's so many lessons that I've like oh my god I need to learn this I need to learn that I need to learn this and I'm, I'm still actively learning them but I'm like 
I feel like that's like some that's like a PhD level yes type of you know yes. schooling that I just like a crash course like <laughs> it is you, when it's you're like you're you're brought to your knees in so many different ways but I always say yes. that the the darker it gets like if, if you think about it like I don't know if it's like a pulley like when you pull the more you pull back and release the further you go and like yes. sometimes I, I've told my sister I was like you know I still have moments where like you know, I, I kind of get down on myself and I get into this like weird rut and I'm like, I thought I already cleared this, but okay, whatever. <laughs> By the time like it springs back forward, I'm like, oh, I feel way better than I've ever felt before. And um, yes. So yes, yes, I agree. I think <laughs> when you ask for that, they'll be like, okay, <laughs> cool. Uh, jump yeah. in. We're going at like- and It's a ride. Well, and it's funny hour. that you say that. See, this is what I try to describe to people in- when you're, when you're in the depths of despair or in the depths of an emotional well that you can't, it's really hard to see the forest through the trees, right? And, and I've been there. We've probably all been there, right? Especially with, you know, I've had the breast cancer. I've been through divorce and it was, uh, it's just, and you think you're never going to get out of it. And the magic happens when you say, kind of like you said this morning, I'm done. I'm done messing around. I'm deserving of more. And I'm going to do whatever it takes to get on the other side of this mountain that I think is insurmountable. And it is hard. I'm not going to, you know, sugarcoat it. It's hard. You got to make choices and do stuff that you don't want to do. But man, it's, it, it's so freeing. You get on the other side. Can you just describe it? It's like, I'm so proud of myself. Mm look what I did. And I just so grounded and calm. And I feel like I can address whatever comes my way. That's what comes from the energy healing work, in my opinion. And if you do it all in this lifetime, I mean, if you don't clear it now, you're just going to have to do it again. So I'm like, I want to clear all this stuff. <laughs> yeah, and I've had my head down going ever since. And it sounds like you're probably doing the same thing. I always make this joke. I'm like, Lord, if I, I'm I'm done reincarnating okay like it's I'm ready to just have this be the last life okay right. thank you so much I want to live a long life in this life yep. by God's grace but I, I'm like I'm, I'm done with it I'm done with the human experience but I've heard recently that we don't have to come back and clear karma if we really don't want to and I was like huh this is interesting I'm going to ask Patty about this it's I've heard it now a couple of times like you know and because I listen to a lot of these conversations and I read a lot of stuff and some people in the spiritual community are saying like actually because we have freedom of choice if we don't learn something we don't have to come back necessarily to learn it we have agency to say okay I want to incarnate again until I learn these lessons or decide, okay, I don't, I don't want to come back here to learn these lessons. Have you given much thought to that? Do you think we have to come back? <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I do, but I, I guess I might caveat that by saying, well, it, I know I'm just going to flat out disagree with that because okay. I think it's a universal law. I mean, it's like if, if you create karma in the third dimension, you must go back to a third dimensional experience. Now, maybe this is kind of where I'm saying uh, maybe because Earth is not the only place to have a third dimensional experience. Um, there are probably many places that right, wouldn't even enter our minds that we could have a third dimensional experience. So I think that I would add to that and say, you don't necessarily have to come back to earth to do it, but you do need to clear whatever you've created in this dimension. It's just a universal law. You know, we're, we're in a universe in a planet of free will. <clears throat> so um, yes, to, to say that, well, we have free will, um, but we do need to come back and release what doesn't serve us. Um, that's kind of the purpose of why we're here in the first place. Um, now, some higher vibrational beings might get to a point where they can be absolved of their karma in other ways. Um, serving in different capacities as an energetic being once you cross over. Um, but in, in, it's my perspective that in some way or another, you've got to balance it out. 
Yeah. Um, whether as a spirit guide, whether as a support for somebody else, whether as you go to another dimension, I do think there are more options than we think there are, but I, it's my opinion. You still need to clear it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting though, because I, I, cause I know that they are universal laws, you know, like karma is yeah. a universal law and all of that stuff. And I'm like, now that that, thought has come into my mind I think I need to think about it a little bit more and, and see where I land but I still kind of mm-hmm. I'm on the side of I I feel like it's something that we would have to do because when I, I listen to this the teachings from Dolores Cannon who yes. did like extensive regression work past life yep. regressions and that was a, a recurring theme that people come back if they have karma to clear and a lot of people are stuck in karma loops and yes. this is part part of why a lot of these conversations are now coming into mainstream consciousness to help people kind of move past that yes. so I, I still kind of feel like that's something that needs to be cleared and the other thing that you said I was going to ask and thank you for reminding me was do you ever pick up past lives from like like for example if you're reading uh in my records and you saw that I lived on a different planet as a different being and an alien like they would call it here on earth have you ever done readings where you're like oh I'm picking up a past life on a different planet has that ever happened to you it hasn't happened to me okay <laughs> um I it, you know and I don't know why and I've never really thought about that and I know I've, I've read books of people who've done readings of saying oh you know you were a rock and then you were a whale and then you were <laughs> and I'm like okay I mean it may not be my thing yeah uh, it, it's not that it doesn't isn't real I mean I do think we have to experience all forms on all levels um, I just think that's not where my focus is um, but not to say that it couldn't happen I just don't think and that's the interesting thing too about like Akashic readings like you know I have my perspective and my way of doing it it's not to say that you wouldn't go see someone else for an Akashic reading and you might get a totally different vibe and a totally different read and they might go into that kind of stuff it's all good yeah yeah I think everyone is it has a different approach yeah um I I was going to ask you you know if people wanted to work with you Mm -hmm. if they wanted to get a reading if they wanted to take a course or have a one-on-one session with you do you offer those and how can people access them sure absolutely um well the best thing to do is to go to my website pattyoliver.com and you know I've just gotten away from doing single one-on-one readings um because I've been doing them for years and I just feel I needed to kind of serve more and in a bigger way and and so that's why I created a couple of things. I have the online course, which is so I teach you how to access your Akashic record so that, you know, you can do your healing. Um, and then I mix other things in there like mindset and emotional triggers and, you know, spiritual contract, all of that good stuff. <clears throat> and then I offer private coaching. So it's kind of like a version of my one-on-one. So it's like, if you and I want to work together, we're going to work for either six or 12 months together. And I'm going to move you through from mm. all your karma and then into manifesting. Um, so I keep you on a track um, and that's really powerful. That's how people really change really, really fast. And you have to allow for that. You have to like, okay, bring it on type of thing because I'm gonna ask you to do clearings and make new choices and, and all kinds of stuff like that. But so I, I, those are the two offerings that I have right now. Um, and that would be the two ways I could I could work with people right now. Well, well, that's great. I am definitely going to put your website in okay. the in, in the bio. But Patty, again, we could sit here all evening I and know. have this conversation. I, I don't <laughs> want it to end, but uh, you're familiar with the show. And I always ask for final words of wisdom. You've been dropping a lot of gems so far, but <laughs> anything you want to leave the audience with before you go? You know, just go for it. Um, Nothing is insurmountable. I know it seems that way at the time. Uh, And again, I've been there myself, but everything has a solution. There is there is a way to get through the hard stuff to to create ultimately what it is that you want. And you can do it in one lifetime. And um, so just don't be afraid. Um, Go for it. And and, uh, you can have the things that you want. Yes. 
Uh, thank you, Patty, so much for stopping by the show for a second time. And maybe absolutely. This, I hope this is a uh this is just <laughs> the beginning of a long term relationship and having you back on on the show. I think it will future. be. Yes. I would I would love that. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, hun. Bye.